It's the lockdown, episode 11, and we're going big. Literally, I've got three of uh, the biggest names in modern big wave surfing. Also, three very cool cats that I've done missions with and hung out with. From Cormacchi, it is Matt Bromley. From Hout Bay, Frank Solomon. And all the way from Portugal, Nick Von Rupp. How are we doing, gentlemen? Good. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we get into South Africa, because the last few have all been based in South Africa, Nick, what's the update from Portugal? I mean, you guys went to quite a heavy lockdown from what I understand early on, but uh, things have relaxed a bit over there now. Yeah, well, we're very close to Spain and Portugal over here. So we had, the, the virus hit uh, Spain and Italy way before it hit here. So no one was really taking it very serious. You know, we, we heard the news in China, but we never thought it was going to hit us. You know, it's always the neighbor that, that suffers. And then I started hearing some news like from Francisco Porcella in Italy and, and, and other friends from Rome. They're telling me, guys, like, take this serious. This is no joke. There's people dying. There's like not enough beds for people, you know, to, to, to be taken care of. So from early on, like everyone started spreading the message and locked themselves uh, into the house before the government even advised it. So that was a pretty smart move. Uh, um, over here in Portugal, we were locked into the house, I think it was the 15th of March. So we were locked down for two months, basically. That was, that was it. Um, it was a very long time, very painful. Um, I live close to nature, so it was like I would escape for a walk or some of that so that was that was cool i could go for a run without having any confrontation with anyone or like a, a you know i wouldn't see anyone so but you know like there's a lot of people suffering a lot of people losing their minds like there was no surfing allowed for two months and we're finally able to you know uh, i think it's three weeks now that we able out again and people able to surf and um slowly people are starting to go to the beach and portugal never really got hit that hard so um, let's see what's going to happen because everyone's back to their normal, normal routines, restaurants are full. So we'll see. I don't know. Well, it's How about you guys? One. It's an interesting one because we're, we're approaching 60 days now here in South Africa of no wow. surfing. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to hear that Portugal did the full two months. Matt Bromley has just got this look on his face right now because he's, he's dying inside. He's almost at two months of no surfing. And Matt, I mean, it, it's especially hard because you were just telling me that you're going to be hiking up the mountain in, in the allowed time, 6 to 9 a.m. tomorrow with AVG to go shoot some, some shots of sunset, which is your favorite big wave right on your, your doorstep. And it's, it's probably going to be firing. So it's not very easy right now. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're in our best season now for surf in Cape Town, like in just before winter. And like the forecast tomorrow, I think it's like four and a half meters, 14 seconds, no wind. So sunset is going to be firing, super west swell, which is great. So we're not surfing, but we're going to go up on the hill and we hopefully want to get this sick photo with like the cross on the hill and like sunset bombing with no one out. But who knows? The Komiki guys have been really naughty. They've been surfing a lot. <laughs> Maybe there'll be a few specs out there. But yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is, eh? <laughs> now, uh, on the other side of the fence, uh, Half Bay, Big Wave Charger, of course, Dungeons right there. Frank Solomon, you've kept yourself pretty busy. You've, you've been running the Sentinel Ocean Alliance, which normally does uh, programs with kids from the, the townships in Half Bay, working you know, with surfing and all of that. But uh, at this time, you guys have shifted operations into feeding the communities, and it's, it's been quite a wild ride, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. Just what's up, boys? Nick, Matt, yeah. haven't seen you guys for long. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, yeah, it's been crazy, man. Um, you know, we we unlike Europe and America. You know, forty percent of our population lives below the po the poverty line. So our issues are vastly different to a lot of the first world countries, and it makes it that much harder for lockdown. I think because some, you know, if you're living in a little shack. Uh, your whole family's in a two by two shack. You can't self isolate. It's impossible. So um, yeah, we've just been feeding the kids and the um, the families that come to our program, and it's been cool, man. Um, it's been it's great to see everyone rally rally behind it and um, 
it's also hard to see dungeons breaking out there though there's one day it was so good and then <laughs> it just yeah definitely crossed my mind to pedal out <laughs> now um a, a big discussion point over the last couple of episodes especially with sort of pro surfers is that um the new reality for surfing even when we do go back to surfing like nick is moving back into the water now is that international travel is not going to happen for a while so sort of the contest side the tour side is definitely on hold till earliest 2021 uh, and that that obviously includes big wave competition I think for you guys, less of an impact than maybe the QS and CT guys, though, because I think Big Wave has always been more kind of about the content side and the contests are kind of a smaller portion of that. Nick, is that kind of going to be your focus now? I mean, you guys are kind of moving into summer, though, over there. It's uh, going to be a little bit more tricky to, to get that content now. Yeah, go, just going back to what uh, Madam and, and Frankie said, uh, basically for us the the lockdown was easy because you know we just came from a huge uh, European winter season we're we're drained like that's all I needed two months at home just doing stuff I've never done like for us it's easy it's it's two foot on shore <laughs> but you know like being locked down when it's 20 foot offshore man who that's a big task so yeah it's, it's it's it must be really really hard what's my program um, man you, to be honest, like Europe or Portugal these days, like has got obviously like these these months are a little slower, but September is just around the corner and September starts to pump again. And for us, like obviously, I'd love to go to Indo, I'd love to go um, to Chopu or whatever. And but it's just different times, man. It's like you know, like there's no need to to go to the other side of the world and catch a swell you know it's it's different times we've got to adapt i love portugal i love my routines here um i just launched a youtube series and obviously you know like i'm i'm trying to get more waves and stuff like that but it's also like about you know showing people what what's up you know outside of the the big wave routine or something like that you know so i'm i'm cruising to be honest like i'm not too worried about um i think there's more issues in our minds right now than you know, the, the short term, term uh, traveling and stuff like that, you know, hopefully everything will go back to, uh, to normal in the long run. Um, you know, just especially Europe in general has, has the economy has just completely collapsed, you know, like uh, in terms of sponsorships and stuff like that, everyone's just pulled the handbrake real hard. And, and I think that's more important, you know, the economy to recover, people to have food on their tables and, you know, people to be able to pay their bills. That's the main issue right now. And it's not really like when's my next vacation going to be or something like that. So um, it's really to, it's important to stay local and support the local businesses at this point and, and everything else is a bonus of the future, you know? And uh, so that's, that's my perspective. Also, also Nick, like the islands right there too. And that's going to that season there, right? Uh, what do you mean, Ireland? Yeah, like, I mean, you, you could probably travel locally in Europe. and Yeah, in you September. Almost you, you almost don't even need to go to Hawaii if you can go surf Mali and Riley's and all those waves. Like, yeah, you just yeah, stay in that's Europe. What, that's what I'm saying. Like, September's yeah. just around the corner, you know? Like, and I'm sure by then we'll be able to go to do those short trips to Europe and stuff. But, man, you know, like, uh, the perspective of Portugal used to be so different. Uh, like, we used to have to, pro you probably feel the same with South Africa, you know, like, or in Portugal, it's like this, like we used to have to travel everywhere. And these days it's like, we got Nazaré, you know, like, fuck, I do my season in Nazaré, a couple slabs around here in Portugal and, and it's good. Um, it's good enough, you know. And, and I'm maybe so South happy Africa. I don't live next to Nazaré and have to surf that on every spot. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like we, we all had to go to Hawaii almost every winter. Nick and I stayed together in the same house. Matt was there and, and like what Nick's is saying is right. Like we can do that stuff. It's maybe not necessary for us to travel to Hawaii every time now. There's a lot of big waves around here. There's a lot of big waves in Europe that, you know, with the with media and social media, you're able to get just as much coverage, maybe even more. Definitely get more waves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, uh, Brom, I mean, you you've been spending a lot of time traveling the last few years. Uh, you and Nick have have been at some of the same spots. Frank's been along for some of those trips. The, the content thing, having your own show, you know, it, it's been important. Frank had his, had his own movie. 
Um, so all three of you have done the media side really well. And it's interesting because, again, when we go back to competition, like the competition scene in big waves in Portugal is, is really sort of blowing up. You know, we, that the wave there has become one of the focal events of the year. And uh, here in South Africa, obviously, we used to have the Red Bull big wave at Dungeons, which was a massive event and used to bring the biggest names. You know, through... I don't know, I suppose you can call it politics, but uh, you know, some people weren't so happy with the event. Um, some decided to vote against it. A lot of uh, the younger guys didn't really want to rock the boat. Looking at sort of our local scene now, it would be a pretty good time if we can go back to surfing. And if you're looking at social distancing and stuff, the, the big wave comp is, is pretty easy to do that. Would it maybe be a good time to bring that event back for the locals and start it with the locals and then when things open up again in a year or two, we, we, we could sort of do the Dungeons event again, Brom? I mean, yeah, I know that, that there, there was a lot of talk about having a contest this year and <clears throat> all the locals, I think a lot of people acknowledge that they made a bad decision. Um, uh, well, some people feel like that, other people don't. But um, yeah, we are frothing to have a comp out of Dungeons. Like we want to get da Dungeons back on the radar. Like it's one of the heaviest waves in the world for sure. And because it hasn't been in the contest scene for a long time, it's, it's a lot of the big stars there kind of go a little bit unnoticed. It's not really on the radar anymore. So um, it definitely deserves to be up there with like the, the scene as like one of the heaviest waves in the world. Um, Nick, we still got to get you over to, so you haven't served Dungeons, eh? Give me a left, mate. Don't. don't <laughs> that's what I was yeah, right. so, so unfair to always and, uh, have to. Go down down. Like, that's why you're but, going left at Mavericks now. Dude, I, just, I just want a big left, man. It's so much easier on your forehand. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Frank I'm, trying to go left. Kai, down the red, it work well. huh? Kai um, Red Bull actually, um, we, they were almost pretty close to having an event this year uh, at Dungeons. It was uh, pretty much in the bag until this thing hit. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of things got disrupted by COVID-19, the contest being one of them, but hopefully next year we can bring it back. Well, that'll it's be just amazing. like, I understand, like from my perspective that, that I'm out from outside, like I understand the point of view of the locals not wanting an event there, but you know, South Africa's at the end of the world. Like no one's gonna travel from all corners of the world to surf. Exactly. I, mean, I mean, like, it's a great opportunity for the locals and the locals deserve it, you know, like guys like you, Matt, you know, uh, Fabian, Fabian, like he absolutely charges, but he's not going to get a chance to show the world at Nazare, you know, because Nazare has their own locals, uh, you know what I mean? So to like, to step it up on the world tour, you kind of need to, you need a chance, you know, that's going to happen on your home ground, you know? So I think the locals should have a little bit more consideration for, you know, the up and coming big wave surfers of South Africa that want to make a name for them themselves. And, you know, that's a great opportunity, you know, so I think it's a little selfish to try to keep, um, you know, a, a, a spot like dungeons out of the WSL radar or contest yeah. radar, just, just because, you know, just because, <laughs> just because of ego. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's also how Twiggy, Greg Long, all those guys made their careers by that first, you're at Dungeons, you know, that's how all the guys cut their teeth. Um, Chris Burnish, yeah. you know, that was the first real big wave event. And another thing is that the city of Cape Town want to look to what Portugal has done in Nazare and that town and growing the economy there, you know, growing a whole town around a wave. And, you know, and our economy is really struggling and our bay is a perfect place to do that. Yeah. Well, and I think it's, it's a really interesting thing to look at the Portuguese situation because Nick, it was very hard for Portuguese big wave surfers just two, three years ago to break down the door. I mean, you've been, you've been trying for a long time. I mean, even back in your QS days, when you were coming to Belita and that, we had this discussion was that, uh, you know, there, was, there were a core, really good group of Portuguese big wave surfers who were having to travel all the time to try to get their names out there. Nazare as an event has happened, and suddenly you guys have got five, six guys with their names in the hat on the big wave tour. It's good that you mentioned Belito because that was a turning point for me where I decided, fuck this, fuck this QS one for waves, you know? <laughs> and at the same time, Kandui was breaking. That was 2015 during that century swell, whatever. And it was like, fuck, I should be there. 
and never do the QS again. <laughs> that was it. But uh, it's, man, Portugal is a case study because there was no such thing as big wave surfing in Portugal back then. You know, like with the amount of talent, guys like Alex, João Macedo, which are like some of the best big wave surfers in the world. You understand what I mean? Like João was 45 years old. There's, there's not many people charging the way. Like he's still running the front run of big wave surfing at Nazaré, you know, like, I mean, paddle surfing at Nazaré. It's crazy. Guys like Alex, he has so much potential to be one of the best. You understand what I mean? So that's all really recent and that's all due to, you know, obviously the big wave attention, um, you know, people, international people coming to Portugal and, and exploring Nazaré. Um, but it's crazy, man. It's changed so much, man. I, you know, I remember me and Alex, we used to go to Hawaii, Obviously, you guys probably feel the same as well. Like, no one would give us a hand. And these days, it's the opposite, you know, because, you know, everyone wants to come to Nazare, everyone wants to surf, and everyone kind of helps us out, you know, to be helped out over here as well. So, man, it changed our lives, you know, it completely. It gave us careers where there wasn't careers, you understand? Nick, um, remember when we were staying at Albies and we surfed Jaws the first time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That was, that was epic. And Albies. He's always been such a legend. Yeah, he's been super cool. And yeah, guys, some of the guys are super cool. So it's yeah. definitely changed a lot. I mean, he talks about Ja. I remember when Ja was posted up at Mavericks for years trying to make a name for himself. And, and I was there with him. And, you know, like Portugal, South Africa, we were just blips on the radar. And, you know, now the whole thing's turned around. And Nazare is, is where it's at. <laughs> yeah. It's been, I mean, it's been, just one thing. That's you know like you south africans and us portuguese we like the underdog you know and and we need to fight to get our position and i feel like having nazar in my backyard really has helped me to establish like a, a you know a recognition and I, I feel that that's what dungeons did for you for many years but being outside of the radar it kind of like you know it's it it's it could help a lot more i i, I would say yeah. right like than it is these days well, look, I think, I think we all agree that um, having the Dungeons Comp back is definitely going to be a good thing for local big wave surfing. And especially for younger guys, like we talk about Fabian, you know, like a guy like that is young and charging and, and, and traveling. He was actually going to come on the show, but he had to go get his uh, COVID test today because he's uh, got a perforated eardrum that needs surgery. So the dangers of big wave surfing, pretty evident <laughs> as well. But Bruno, let, let, let's, talk, let's talk about traveling. I mean... South Africans have always traveled because we're down in the southern tip. We have good waves, but if you want to make a name, whether it be contest surfing, free surfing, or big wave, you've got to travel. And I mean, on the Rand, it's never easy because our, our exchange rate is pretty horrendous. I mean, outside of Indo, everywhere else is super expensive. And when you start talking like Nick was talking about Chopu, where you have been, like that's on the other side of the world. It's probably the most expensive trip a South African can can do. I mean, mm. how do you sort of balance where you go and what you spend your money on? Um, so I've been for the last two years. I've been focusing my efforts on making a movie called uh, Over the Edge, and um, I've been working with the same filmmaker in Australia that I did my last series on. And we've been like, it's the most stressful thing ever when a swap pops up because. I guess my budget allows me to do maybe like four international trips a year kind of. And uh, like last year we decided to chase this world to Chopu and was like, I think it was like almost like half of my budget just getting there. It was so gnarly. Um, so like each swell is so stressful because we, we weighing up like all the elements, the little fine details, speaking to all the people on the ground to see um, whether they think it's going to be on or not. Like are there multiple swells back to back and just taking in as many, factors as possible because it's it's quite a if you i had a few of those last year where i chased a swell over to somewhere and got a little bit skunked and it, it made it really tricky because that's like one or two of my trips done for the year you know then there's only maybe two or three left um, so just trying to be super calculated on which swells i chase and like really picking um the ex exact spots i want to go to like i've got a list of the only a list of places that are i feel are perfect for my approach to surfing and those are the spots i'm looking at like specifically and frank yeah i mean me and, yeah i mean i i just worked illegally yeah <laughs> but we, couldn't have, we couldn't afford to to live in San Francisco, <laughs> so we sold Christmas and you know in hawaii i was staying there and we were 
I was working at the Sunrise Shack and, you know, gardening and doing yard work. Me and Josh did that for years. And I mean, if you, you've got to do what you got to do, you know, like if you want to make it happen. That's kind of, if you don't have much budget, that's kind of the only option really. <laughs> I've slept on uh, Nick's couch a few times in Portugal. He's really helped and given me. Looks like a good couch over there. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, yeah, no it's, it's yeah. definitely different for South, for South Africans. Our currency is obviously eighteen to one to the euro, and you know we're on the other side of the world, so it is difficult. And but it's not impossible. You just have to you have to make some sacrifices and make it. it depends how badly you want it, I guess. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the, you know, big wave surfing is already a will because. It, it takes a certain kind of dedication to put yourselves in those lineups and go for those waves. And I mean, it's interesting for me when, when we saw the sort of evolution of big wave surfing in South Africa, when I was a lot younger, the sort of core beginner crew were all older guys. Like it seemed to me like back in the day, big wave surfing was something that you kind of got into in your forties. Um, and if I look at the guys like Pierre de Villiers, you know, Mickey Daffus, like uh, the coach, Simon, like all much older guys. These days, though, if I look at you guys, you guys were almost like the front runners of the youth brigade, like young guys wanting to get stuck into the big wave stuff. And we are seeing more and more sort of younger surfers now, you know, seeing this as a, not only uh, a thing they want to do, but also a career path. Like what is, what is your advice to the younger guys, like 14, 15, who, who, who like A, have that sort of uh, hunger to actually go push themselves because not everyone's got it but b also like how how do you get into big wave surfing how do you how do you sort of line yourself up to get out there find a different yes. sport <laughs> <laughs> there's no money in big wave surfing <laughs> nick what do you have to say bro <laughs> man i i just feel like I, I, I understand what you say, uh, Kai. It's just like, you know, the reason why there wasn't before that many interest in big wave surfing with young, amongst young people is because there's a high, there's a big chance of you, you know, pre-vest era, like there's, there was a big chance of you drowning, you know? And dude, when you're 20 years old, you don't want to put yourself in that position, you know? Like the talented people were choosing other, you know, obviously we all like to surf big waves. We always have that in us. But, you know, like, you know, we want to come back to our families and stuff. So I feel like the vests have really helped out the younger generation to put time into big wave surfing and like the talented people to like guys like Lucas, Matt, you know, Frank and stuff like that, just to put time into, into more talent into big wave surfing so the sport can progress. So that's what I feel like. Uh, it's just a lot safer these days. And that's why there's also younger people putting – you know, putting their efforts into it. And um, I've always had, I grew up with Joe Mastel. He, you know, he's one of the best big wave surfers in the Zedea now, but he wasn't back then. But he always, like, there's something that he always put in my mind. And, you know, like, I'm not going to say I, I was, like, the fearless kid that always wanted, you know, like, no, I want the biggest one or something like that. No. But for me, it was all about, like, overcoming your fears and, you know, just putting yourself in an uncomfortable position, you know, until you feel comfortable. And João always told me, he was like always by my side and like, Nick, let's go. You always like, if you don't want to go out, like the rule number one is always go out, sit in the channel, have a look at it, you know? And then you're like in the water. Once you're in the water, you're like closer to the waves and you start uh, shifting towards the waves, you know? And all of a sudden you catch a wave. So like, I think rule number one is always get in the water. That's step number one, you know, have a look at it from close by and then slowly like move yourself up to the lineup. And that has happened everywhere to me at Jaws, at Nazare, at, um, There's at, no channel at Nazare though. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say something, Kai. I, I, I also think that, um, you know, me personally, like as I've gotten older, I felt a lot more comfortable. Um, you know, you're in those situations a lot more often, like you're in different winds, different size swells, and even today, if you look at the best guys like Twiggy, I mean, Twiggy's an older guy, you know, <laughs> like he's um, Jamie Mitchell, um, Carlos, like a lot of the guys that are still doing well are older because you gain that experience of traveling and going to these different places. And I think 
to come in as a young guy and then to get like really pounded and then to scare yourself and never go out again. Um, I think it's important to work yourself up into like next year's bigger and bigger waves and not just, I mean, mm. we've seen a lot of guys come and go, right? Like someone who's had a horrific wipeout and then it's like, we, I'm done. So I think it's important to slowly uh, build up to, to proper 20 foot waves. <laughs> oh. Me, horrific wipeout, done. <laughs> Matt, Matt, you can take Matt Bromley's class as well if you want. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Maddie, of course, yeah, you, you, you've moved into coaching now as well and doing your, your big wave course. And it's interesting because, I mean, we have seen exponential growth in, in this side of things and like breath hold exercises and courses. Um, obviously, on the big wave side as well, as if you want to do that, it's not just about paddling and learning about vests and holding your breath. It's about learning how to operate a jet ski because you, you've got to be able to do water safety. You've got to be able to, to go catch guys in the zone, which is which can be an immensely intense. I mean, I've, I've just been on skis and boats in that zone filming. And I mean, you're terrified and you're not even really in the impact zone, but you're close enough. And I mean, when you're on a rubber duck going over, a 30 foot of dungeons in the air, it's also quite scary. But I mean, how, how amazing is it that suddenly there is all of this sort of resources, Matt, that you, you, you've got the aid to, to get there. But it, like I say, you've got to learn a, a couple of different skills before you're really there. Yeah, definitely. Eh? Um, I'm actually even giving a, I'm doing a webinar later on, on fear to a whole lot of school kids, how to over step up to fear because that's obviously a big part of it um i think exactly like what nick said about stepping stones is really important like you never just plunge yourself into the zone like the first time i served dungeons i also i didn't watch i just went straight in and i and i almost drowned like and i thought it wasn't i was like i'm not doing big wave surfing anymore and then on my way back to the channel uh just this wave came straight to me and i had like the ride of my life back then and then that set me on the path but um yeah, I think I think it ta you can't just like not you can't just think about small wave surfing and then go surf a big wave. Like you have to make it a, a lifestyle, and um, you have to think about it all the time. Like visualize it, um, and you've got to get that feeling of, of of it like in your head, you know. Because um, if this big swell pops up and you haven't even thought about it, you haven't done any re real training specifically for big waves. If a big soul pops up, it's just going to strike fear deep into your soul. Like when you see those big red blobs coming, I mean, everyone gets nervous no matter who you are. But if you, that's what you've been training for, you've been thinking about it, you've been visualizing it, then it's, uh, you've got the equipment ready, then that's actually what you are waiting for. There's a lot more purpose in that. Then you, it's a lot easier to step up and, uh, to that fear. So it's, it's a big mental game for sure. The jet skis too, Bromley. You and me on the ski. <laughs> yeah, we we <laughs> got a lot of work to do with the jet skis. Yeah. <laughs> we we were towing an island at Mali, and me and Matt and Josh were so useless on the ski that they just left us floating in the channel for like three hours, and then towed us <laughs> in and we had a chance. And like a little side wind chop hit us, and we all fell off. Like ah, <laughs> <laughs> it was like twenty foot and onshore. It was so funny. <laughs> Uh, that's that's one of the reasons like for me my goal in my career the last couple of years was really to get good on the jet ski because man it's you can't rely on people to tow you in you got to be a partner you got to be able to tow someone in not yeah. you're just going to be left on the, on the on on the side and it's understandable you know it's <laughs> it is what it is you know you got to be able to do it all drive tow paddle everything now it's it's like like another, you guys have a great like team where like the guy toes and there's a paddler and it seems like you have a great setup and you have your own like only seen on instagram but uh your own like um garage with your ski and your whole setup there yeah well miserere is definitely just how everything the whole involvement from how close the port is to the wave how like you rock up and the wave breaks right in front of the headland uh, you know, like in, in terms of safety, like having the, the government behind supporting the whole operation, it's just a perfect setup, you know, um, yeah. the barrel just, the wave just needs to barrel. Oh, a you more. guys need to come and show us, come do a course or something. That'd be sick. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be super cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, you just, yeah. Sorry, Nick. Um, 
we are running out of time, so I'm just going to move it on a little bit here. So I know a lot of a lot of the guys out there want to know because it's it's always a big thing. You, you know, we talk about uh, the glory of big wave surfing, but there's the other side. There's the hidings. Uh, Matty was talking about his first one out of dungeons. For you guys, each of you, I mean, what what's been the worst? What's been the the worst situation you've been in in big waves? Maybe maybe start with. <laughs> Um, I went over to visit Mick in 2016 and I was actually doing a premiere for my movie Risky Business and uh, I didn't, I, he's like, oh, Nick was like, oh, Nazare is going to be breaking this weekend and I was like, what, this was only like low three meters, but I didn't realize how that place magnifies the swell so much and the waves were huge. I mean, that was sort of small for Nazare, but it was really big and scary and I basically just got caught inside a massive set and um, I got, um, pulled both my tags and my vest came up. This guy rescued me on the jet ski, uh, but my board dragged, pulled me back off into the wave. I got slammed without a breath, snapped my leash, came up. Another guy picked me up on the jet ski. The wave came over us, like 30 foot foamy over the jet ski. I was like on the back, got ripped off again without a breath and then had like a fourth, like 15, 20 foot monster foamy double up, like break on my head. And I remember the, the water being so aerated there because of the, the underwater the currents, like I could barely get a breath above the foam. And then I got washed up the beach and the whole horizon was, was moving and like coughing up blood. And like, that wasn't even a really big dead Nazare. So I can't imagine what the beat downs are like when it's, when it's really solid. Franco? Sure, for me it was a dungeon, eh? The early days of towing, we were towing behind a rubber duck, and I never towed before. Is that with and Steve Bradburn? <laughs> yeah, he was driving the rubber duck, and um, very primitive equipment. But we had, I had two Dakin tow vests on, and I just went straight on a set. I should have tried to make it, and uh, yeah, I just got pinned straight down to two wave hold down with these two vests on. And like, really, when I came up, I was pretty, I was. I don't know when you have the samba, when you're like, I was like uh, on the verge of blacking out and my whole body was shaking. And yeah, it took me a long time to recover from that. I still don't think I've maybe recovered from that, to be honest. Like, so it just wow. stays with you in the back of your mind. And it's just, you know, I felt before that I was pretty fearless. I go on anything, but yeah, getting there <laughs> 10 years later. <laughs> and Nick? I don't know. Um, maybe I might be too cautious when I'm surfing. <laughs> no, I've obviously Mavericks. I've had some really bad Mavericks uh, wipeouts. Uh, that um, yeah, just trying to surf the left and stuff like that. That place takes you really deep and really. But like I, I like whenever I wipe out, I I go into like survival mode. Like I'm in different. I go into a different spectrum where I'm like I don't know what happens. Like you know when you black out and you don't really know what's happening. That's my state of mind when I'm underwater, you know, I don't really know. But I've never really, really had, like, I've never had a two-wave hold down or anything. I've had some heavy beatings in the Zareya, but not really. For me, the, the worst situation I've ever been, to, been in was the situation with Alex uh, during the Nazareth Challenge. That was, for me, the like, worst moment of my life. I thought, I thought Alex was dead for a minute. You know what a minute is of your buddy being dead? It's like, it's an eternity. And then all of a sudden, you know, they were saying that, you know, he didn't have any, any pulse and, um, and you know, that, that only means one thing, you know, and then they went silent and it was like, holy shit, he's dead, man. Like one of my best friends, the guy I just went to Hawaii with is dead, you know, and that was definitely the worst moment of my life. Like I could not believe it. And I started praying so hard and all of a sudden like he came back. So that was for me, that was a miracle. And, and, um, it's just, fuck, it's, it's a miracle. He's doing well. And, but yeah, that was definitely the heaviest moment. I'd rather be in his position than in my position, you know, watching it all from the outside, you know, so. Is he okay now? Is he totally fine? He's fine, man. <laughs> Which is- He's a beast, went, man. He's such a big dude, too. Oh, <laughs> He's such an animal. 10 minutes face down, you know. Oh, well, then we look at the other side, because obviously there's a reason you three gentlemen do what you do. And I mean, I have to be honest, like I've been around big wave surfing for such a long time filming just supporting and i'm fascinated by it but i don't have that thing inside like you three do because i have no drive to be out there i might go every now and then on a smaller day and sort of push myself but it's not a hunger for me 
like what what is it that you guys get out of big wave surfing that drives you to put yourselves in those situations go matt <laughs> um i just i believe at this point in my life it's what i was born to do it's ride big waves and when i'm out there and it's really big i feel um that's exactly where i'm supposed to be um and i feel especially out of jaws i think i felt like i'm in god's hands i just feel like I, you just relinquish all control and you just that's exactly what i'm supposed to be and in those crazy moments of like raging oceans i feel like amazing peace so and and when you when you you're always looking for the best way of your life and it hardly ever happens but when it does it's one of the best feelings in the world so, yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think for me too, I like, you know, those big, clean, glassy days I, when it's just you and a couple of friends out and you're sharing waves. And I think it's just, uh, you're so present. It's the most present that I am in my life. You know, I'm not worried about social media, my phone, what's happening. You just, there's not many times in modern life where you're just 100% in the moment. And I think when the waves are 20 feet and you're with your friends and you're surfing, that's, that's a rare time. Nick? For me, it's... Um... I don't know. It's, it's like that feeling of playing with fire. You know, you're like constantly dealing with fear and overcoming your fear and you're scared, but you don't want to go, but you do want to go. You know, it's that mix of emotions and that adrenaline you get uh, when you survive. And it's just, that's, that's, that's what really brings me back the whole time. I always have the feeling, no, like I'm done. Like I'm good. I don't want to catch one more wave or whatever. And, and then next morning comes up, you're like, you're back out there foaming to get another wave. So that's really like it's that thrill, like that you can't do it. You don't want to do it, but you do want to do it. You know, it's that constant yeah. mix. Of things. Yeah, that's, for me, that's what it's it. Well, boys, on that note, I'm going to say thanks because we're officially out of time. But uh, thank you so much for being on the first big wave edition of the lockdown. Remember, guys, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We need those subscriptions to keep the show going. Romdog, Frankie, hopefully see you guys in the lineup soon. Let's hope uh, our government uh, bring back surfing. And Nick, to you and the Portuguese crew, big love, my man. We stoked you guys are back in the water. Catch a few for us. And uh, for myself, for <laughs> myself, I hope you guys enjoy the show, and we'll catch up with you soon. You take us to your left, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>